with Ali Akbar Khan and Shantarao, introduced by Yehudi Menuhin. Music and dance from India. Next Wednesday, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City is going to open an exhibition that's called Textiles and Ornamental Arts of India. They will show fabrics and folk sculpture and they will perform music and they will dance. Now, the government of India and the museum and omnibus have combined to bring to this country two very distinguished artists and their accompanists. And I'm not going to introduce them. I'm going to turn you over to a man who has a passionate understanding of their music and their art and whom you all know as Yehudi Menuhin. Ever since my first visit to India some three years ago, I've dreamt of the day when I could introduce my friends and my distinguished colleagues to this country, for their music and their dance is something which I'm sure will inspire us all. This is Miss Shantarao, one of the leading exponents of the classical dance in India, and her accompanist, Mr. Netapa, who plays the southern drum which sounded at both ends, treble and bass. And Miss Basanti Rao, who taps these two pieces of wood in an implacable rhythm which serves as the background, that's right, to the chant sung by Mr. Venkata Ram. And he also uses these symbols to accentuate the rhythm. And then I'm very pleased and proud to present India's greatest sorrowed player, Mr. Ali Akbar Khan. This ancient instrument boasts 25 strings. Ten are already quite impressive to a violinist. And these ten serve to carry the melody, whereas the other 15 are plucked, the ten are plucked, the other 15 are, uh, serve to maintain the resonance of the instrument. This is our brilliant drummer, Mr. Chaturlal, who plays the northern version of the tabla, or drums. These is, this is the treble, and the other drum is the bass. And we come to the indispensable instrument of all Indian music, the anonymous tampura or drone, which maintains the pitch, provides the bass for the melody, and in fact creates a kind of hypnotic mood which seems to liberate the spirit of all players. This is Mr. Gore, who is a pupil and happens to be studying in New York City. The dance, as well as all art, of India were born in the temples of the ancient Hindu civilization, carrying us back in an unbroken line many, many thousands of years. They were all intended as offerings to the gods. In fact, it would seem unthinkable to an Indian musician almost up to our very day, to any artist, dancer, or sculptor, to make a livelihood out of his art, to use it for any professional purposes. It is always a labor of love. We will be introduced in our first dance to a classical kind termed Bharatanatyam. This is an age-old traditional dance wherein each gesture is symbolic of a particular state of being, love, fear, pain, or rage. Ms. Shantarao will dance a ritual invocation called Alaripu. The Alaripu Thank <laughs> you. 
So the more repetitive the song, the more invention the dancer displays. And when the singer senses that the dancer has interpreted a complete section of the poem, then they all switch from mere storytelling. The dancer stops making hand and body pictures and beats out complex rhythmic patterns with her bare feet and ankle bells, and the singers chant a sort of scat of rhythmic syllables. dance is traditional, but with each performance, new details are improvised. How, I wondered, does the singer know exactly when Shanta wants to change pattern? I don't look at them and make a sign. Definitely not. <laughs> if I want to dominate, I jolly well dominate the artist. But here, there's no question of really dominating that much, because there is such a beautiful cooperation between us. Sometimes we go mischievous. Then I just want to challenge the artist on the spur of the moment. And uh, thus we have a very nice time together. They want to show off themselves and I want to show off myself. Because sometimes creative things flow from me. 
so fast, so quick. Thank you.